Hi guys, it's Shani Becker. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. So I'm now a final year medical student, a few months out from being a doctor. Let's get straight into this video. Today we're going to talk about sex. What to you decides whether someone is male or female? Often people who are posed this question will answer that it's the chromosomes that determine someone's sex i.e. if someone's an XX, they're a female sex, and if someone's an XY, they're a male sex. So the next question I'm gonna ask you, if I showed you a picture of this person and told you that they had a penis, what sex would you tell me they were? And if I now told you that in fact they had an XX chromosome, what sex would you tell me they were? If I showed you a photo of this person and told you that they had a uterus, a vagina, and fallopian tubes, what sex would you tell me they were? If I now told you that in fact they had an XY chromosome, what sex would you tell me they were? The point of this is not to expect you to say that initially they were a female and now you consider them to be a male. The point of this is to explore the idea that actually in some cases, the sex chromosomes might not actually determine someone's sex as we know it. And that sex might not be this very strict system that I think a lot of people tend to insinuate in the arguments that they pose. Now I think the world has come a long way in discussing genders and gender identity identities and the idea that there's some fluidity in genders. However, when it comes to sex, I think that the world is still very stuck on this idea that sex is a very binary concept dictated by the chromosomes that someone has. These are all examples of disorders of sexual development. And in this video, I'm gonna explain exactly how this can happen. Firstly, it's useful for us to discuss how sexual development actually occurs when we're an embryo and to explain what we typically mean when we talk about the male sex or the female sex. Apart from chromosomes, there are actually a few other things that can dictate whether someone is a typical male sex or a typical female sex. And this can roughly be split into the following components. So there are the chromosomes, the gonads, and the gonads refer to the internal genitalia. So whether someone has testes or whether someone has ovaries. The hormones that predominate, so either estrogen or testosterone, and then the external genitalia. So this is the bits that you can see, so like the vagina and the penis. So in order for someone to actually come out as a typical female or a typical male, all of these things actually need to line up perfectly without any error in the genetic material or in the development. There are some disorders where there are errors that occur, which means that these things don't line up perfectly. And you get, for example, someone who does have XX chromosomes, but has developed a penis, or someone who does have XY chromosomes, and that's actually developed a uterus and a vagina. So you're probably familiar with the concept that every embryo has the potential to develop into either a male or a female. So each embryo contains all of the structures that can go on to produce female sexual reproductive organs or male sexual reproductive organs. So this includes the gonads, which can go on to become testes or ovaries, the malarian duct, which I'll call the female duct, and the wolfian duct, which I'll call the male duct. So what happens when someone has XX chromosomes? Okay, so in a situation where someone has two X chromosomes, or importantly, someone does not have a Y chromosome, the body essentially detects that there is no Y chromosome in sight. So it's not actually the fact that there are two X chromosomes, it's the fact that there is an absence of the Y chromosome that the body picks up a certain signal. So in the absence of a Y chromosome, the body automatically gets a signal to allow the male duct to degenerate. So the male duct disappears and the female duct persists, so the female duct stays. And because the male duct is nowhere to be seen and the female duct is still present, that female duct then goes on to create the fallopian tubes, the uterus, and the upper part of the vagina. Now coming back to that second X chromosome, because as I said before, it's the fact that there's not a Y chromosome that this happens. The second X chromosome is responsible for ensuring that gonads go on to develop ovaries. If that second X chromosome is not present, the gonads don't actually develop into ovaries. So this is an important thought for you to hold on to. So when someone has two normal X chromosomes, the body detects there is no Y chromosome in sight. And so we can destroy the Wolfian duct, the male duct, we can keep the female duct, and that female duct will then become the vagina, the uterus, and the fallopian tubes. And then the fact that the body now detects that there are two X chromosomes means that the body says, hey, 
the gonads are going to become the ovaries and that's how a female develops in the early stages so hold on to that thought so what happens when you have an x and a y chromosome now in this case the body detects the presence of a y chromosome the body doesn't even care the, about the fact that there's an x and a y all the body cares about is there is a y and that y needs to be completely functional and when the body detects that there is a y chromosome in sight it says okay we need to make sure that we do not keep the female duct, we destroy it. There's an instruction to destroy the female duct and an instruction to keep the male duct and an instruction to make sure that the gonads develop into testes. Now, because the female duct is gotten, we do not develop the uterus, the fallopian tubes and the vagina. And because the male duct is still there, we end up developing the male tubes that connect the testes to the penis. So the male duct is only responsible for creating the tubes that connect the, the testes to the penis. And the Y chromosome has already told your body, those gonads that you had, they're gonna become testes. Okay, so right now we have testes, we have tubes, so where's the penis? So the penis actually develops in response to the fact that you still have testes present, the testes produce testosterone, and it's the testosterone hormone that stimulates the production or development of a penis. So now going back to the start of the video where I showed you this picture, a person who has a vagina, who has a uterus, so a womb, um, and who has fallopian tubes, so female tubes, but I told you that they had an XY chromosome. So how did that happen? So this is an example of a disorder of sexual development and it's called Swire syndrome. As I mentioned before, the Y chromosome contains a really important instruction that tells the body Make sure that you destroy the female duct, make sure that you hold on to the male duct, and make sure that you develop testes. But it's not the entire Y chromosome that instructs the body to do this. It's actually a very specific region on the Y chromosome called the SRY region. And it's that specific region that contains the genetic material with these important instructions. You're probably familiar with the idea of mutations on DNA, where sometimes chunks of DNA can randomly get deleted. Usually the body is pretty good at making sure that the parts of the DNA are deleted are parts where there's actually an error in the code of DNA so that you don't get any errors in the human that develops. But sometimes DNA gets deleted by accident when actually there was no error. And this is something that can happen on the Y chromosome. If it so happens that the body accidentally deletes a part of the Y chromosome and that deletion takes out that instruction region, so the SRY region, then suddenly you have someone that actually has a Y chromosome, but doesn't have the part of the Y chromosome that contains that specific instruction to ensure that the female ducts are gone, the male ducts stay, and that you develop testes. In the absence of those instructions, what do you think happens? So again, the instructions were, make sure we destroy the female duct. That instruction's no longer there so the female duct does not get destroyed. Make sure that we keep the male duct. That instruction's no longer there, so the male duct doesn't get kept. Make sure that the gonads develop into testes. That instruction's also not there, so the gonads never develop into testes. So now you have a situation where the male duct is gone, there are no testes that developed, but the female duct remains. And that female duct, because it remains, naturally then goes on to develop the tubes, the uterus, so the womb, and the vagina. So some of you keen listeners might have picked up on the fact that I mentioned that the testes won't develop, but I also didn't mention that the ovaries will develop. And that's because remember I said the development of ovaries depends on the body detecting that there are two X chromosomes present. In this case, there aren't two X chromosomes present. So you don't develop ovaries. But the fact that the female duct stays means that you do get the fallopian tubes, you do get the uterus, and you do get the vagina. You're just missing the ovaries. So what does a person with Swire syndrome look like? So people born with Swire syndrome are born with a vagina, uterus, and fallopian tubes. And usually when someone is born, a doctor tends to look at the external genitals, so either the penis or the vagina, and says, um, this is a female or this is a male. And so at birth, someone with Swire syndrome, despite the fact that they have XY chromosomes, will actually be assigned female at birth. People with Swire syndrome also tend to be quite tall. Now remember that I said that people with Swire syndrome do not develop ovaries. The ovaries 
are responsible for releasing estrogen. And this hormone's really important um, to allow secondary sexual characteristics to develop. Uh, that means breasts and armpit hair when you hit puberty. And it's also responsible for allowing you to kickstart menstruation and start having periods. So usually people with Swire syndrome go on to uh, live life as a female, and then they hit an age where they would expect to have started puberty, expect to have started their periods, and they don't. They don't develop breasts, they don't get their periods because they don't have estrogen. And it's usually at this point that they usually go to the doctors and they say, hey, I've started, I have still not started my period. And that's when we can start doing investigations, including a genetic test and an ultrasound scan that will reveal that there are no ovaries present and that genetically these patients have an XY chromosome. And so because they've gone on their whole life um, assigned as a female, we allow them to continue developing as a female by giving them estrogen uh, in medication form so that the estrogen can help them to develop breasts, to develop armpit hairs, and even start their periods. Because they don't have ovaries themselves, it means that they don't release eggs and so they can't have their own biological offspring or children, um, but they certainly can use the uterus that they have to implant a fertilized egg uh, and carry their own children. So it's really amazing what can happen in the human body. Okay, so I also showed you at the beginning of the video a photo of this person, and I told you that they have a penis, um, they have testes, but they also have an XX chromosome. So how does this come about? So by now you've hopefully got a pretty good understanding of how chromosomes relate to the development of sexual reproductive systems. So hopefully you can keep up with this one. So we all know that we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. It's one of the first things you learn in biology. And one chromosome from each pair came from your mum and one chromosome from each pair came from your dad. And our own bodies then go on to make sperm cells and egg cells so that we can pass on genetic material to our own children. Our body will pick one chromosome from each pair to put into the egg or to put into the sperm. Now it would be a really simple story if our body just went eeny meeny miny mo and picked one of the two chromosomes that we got from our mum or from our dad to put into the sperm cell or the egg cell but it's not quite a simple story. Before our body does this, it actually swaps around genetic material between the chromosomes that we inherited from our mum and from our dad. And instead of just passing on mum's chromosome or dad's chromosome, our body actually passes on a hybrid version of the chromosome. Now this sounds kind of wacky and spooky, but the whole point of it is just to encourage variety in genetic material. If we were to constantly pass on just one chromosome from mum, one chromosome from dad, there wouldn't actually be that much variation in the world at all. So constantly creating new hybrid versions to put into our egg and sperm cells means that the genetic material is just much, much, much more diverse. And that's how we get such huge diversity in the human population. There is one exception to this rule. Swapping of genetic material between chromosomes is allowed in every chromosome except for the sex chromosomes. And this is because the sex chromosomes contain genetic material that's really specific to sexual development, the crossing over of information would cause errors in development. So I hope you see where I'm going with this. So there are some cases where the body mistakenly does swap around genetic material between an X chromosome and a Y chromosome before it then chooses one of each to go into different sperm cells in a man. This man now has a sperm cell that contains an X chromosome with bits of the Y chromosome swapped into it and a Y chromosome with bits of the X chromosome swapped into it. If we zoom into this sperm cell that contains that faulty X chromosome and we can see that the swap happened in a way that meant that important SRY region from the Y chromosome got swapped into the X chromosome. It now means that that X chromosome, even though it's a female X chromosome, it contains the instructions to create male reproductive organs. So if then this man has a child and that child was made using the sperm cell that contained this X chromosome that had the SRY region in it, guess what will happen? This person will inherit an X chromosome from their mother because that's all you can inherit from your mother. An X chromosome from their father with instructions to develop male reproductive organs. And that's exactly what they will do. What does a person in this situation look like? So this is called Le Chappelle syndrome. And a person with Le Chappelle syndrome will have testes, 
will have the tubes that connects their testes to the penis and will then develop a penis because they have testes that releases testosterone. This person still has two X chromosomes and still has some genetic information uh, that has not been swapped out of the X chromosome. As you can imagine, apart from their reproductive organs, what else happens really depends on what parts of the X chromosome were swapped out and what parts have been kept. So these people are infertile to different extents. Some of these people go on to develop feminine characteristics such as breasts. And when a man develops breasts, it's called gynecomastia. People with Le Chapelle syndrome usually have poor facial hair growth. They might also have a low libido, so a low sex drive. So in summary, Le Chapelle syndrome is a disorder of sexual development where someone inherits two X chromosomes, one of these X chromosome has the SRY region swapped into it from a Y chromosome and so has the instructions to make um, male reproductive organs and they will go on to develop male reproductive organs. They will not have female reproductive organs but they might develop some female characteristics as a result of some other instructions on the X chromosome that still persists. So I hope you found that really interesting and I hope you managed to keep up with and understand how mutations and errors in chromosomes can lead to disorders of sexual dysfunction and that actually sex might not always be as simple as an XX and an XY chromosome always going on to make what you phenotypically would assign with a female and phenotypically would assign with a male. There are actually a lot more disorders of sexual dysfunction including one where you're born with a vagina that later develops into a penis once you hit puberty and one where you develop testes on the inside but a vagina on the outside. So if this is something that you think you would be interested in and you're keen on learning a bit more about disorders of sexual dysfunction, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to give this video a like so that it gets recommended to people like you. And I shall see you in the next video. Bye!